if I feel the gnarly burn on something like squats or uh, leg presses, hack squats, if there is convincing data that the stuff you're making that makes your muscles burn also grows you, it changes the psychology of those last few reps mm -hmm. because now pain means growth and now I want more. Instead of being like, oh, I've already beat my reps from last week, better turn it in. <laughs> I kind of get, you know, real lizard eyed and go, oh mm -hmm. boy. Imagine how that changes the dynamics of the personal training sphere when, you know, Betty's doing split squats. She's like, I can't do it anymore. Like, Betty, the pain you feel is literally the ions that make you grow. <laughs> more reps, Betty. Does lactate and other metabolites that are associated with the burn from higher reps or getting really close to failure or taking very short rest breaks, is there a mechanism by which they cause some amount of muscle growth? Because you get two looks. Some people are like, yep, it's metabolites, it's cell swelling, it's also muscle tension, mostly tension. To get another look from people that's like, it's just tension and they just don't want to have any more of it. Cell swelling aside, I'm quite swollen sitting here just embracing <laughs> this manhood in front of me. What? Wow. Huh. Thanks. That was said. You can't say that kind of thing to female guests, mostly because you're misgendering them. But uh, what do you think about metabolites and muscle growth? Yeah, so I have to give credit to um, Dr. Daniel Lawson. He, we published a review article on this. Um, and really thorough, like there's a lot of pretty much every study we could find that speaks to this and, uh, the resistance training studies in humans that have actually measured lactate. We think we found them, the ones that had like an outcome variable of interest. So there's a lot in there, but I mean, according to our review of the literature, there's enough evidence for me to kind of like you said with the sauna, like, I don't know for sure, but there's enough here that's intriguing. Mm -hmm. Like when you take simple experiment overall, now the actual protein analysis and, and that is, is sophisticated, but there's cells in a dish, you know, cell culture, uh, myoblast. Mm, uh, okay. Muscle, yeah. muscle, muscle cells, cells, yeah. um, cells that can, you know, eventually become a, a muscle fiber. Sure. So, okay. We have this solution that has things in there to keep the cells from dying, we'll say, right? And so then we add lactate at the, a concentration that would mimic what uh, our blood lactate might be. Uh, during hard exercise. During, yeah. So, mm. so some of the highest lactates uh, that we have measured from resistance training in the blood the amount in the muscle is going to be much, much higher, higher right. right? But in the blood is probably 10 to 20 millimoles. Okay. Okay. So if we use that, so that concentration, and we put that lactate in this Petri dish, and we incubate the cells for a period of hours or days, and there's a, there's a Petri dish that doesn't have any lactate present, there's at least like four studies um, and really the other ones, little different designs and, you know, they, they actually had, they fed mice lactate, uh, they injected lactate. I've seen the these. injection study. Yeah. I didn't know they fed them lactate. What the fuck does lactate taste like? Acidic. I don't lactate. know. I'm curious. <laughs> um, but I mean, in those studies, man, incubated, uh, and then they've, they've done like pulsatile exposures to kind of mimic what it would be like from like in a week's time. Mm -hmm. Cause like one day in, in for a mouse is like a month for a human. Yes. Right. And so if we have these intermittent periods of exposure to lactate, the thought was kind of, kind of mimicking what you would get if you're training periodically. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So both of those examples, like incubation over hours or days or pulsatile, you see generally speaking, larger growth responses, more yeah. upregulation of um, molecules involved in really the mTOR pathway. Mm -hmm. So that's the mammalian target of rapamycin. It's kind of this anabolic complex of proteins that it's involved with initiating the translation of RNA into proteins, protein synthesis. We want more of those proteins to grow the, the cell, right? Well, I understand mTOR is one of the critical core pathways of muscle growth in oh, animals is. and humans. And yeah. so like, that's really decent fucking basic evidence huh right 
No, you know, handful. The handful's handful. nice, though. It is nice. Especially think... with well-controlled animal models. Like, yeah. that's, that starts to build an interesting picture. Mm-hmm. Well, of the, like, 10, right, half of them in vitro, so culture, and then the other involved an actual, you know, rodent. Uh, and those are a little more mixed, but they were kind of odd, the okay. study designs and, sure. like, translating it to humans. Sure. And there's just not... I don't know. Well, take it from here. Like, what what do we want to get into with with us for practical application? Because for practical, are, are, so are there any human studies trying to tease apart the mechanisms of muscle growth that you find compelling enough to be like, yeah, there's something here for metabolites. I know that there are many metabolites, and lactate is not the only one. And some of them have been kind of correlated to muscle growth before. But the metabolite hypothesis in general. Let me put it another way. Are you aware of any research that completely refutes the metabolite hypothesis? I wouldn't say it completely refutes it. And that's a really, I think, good frame for this, right? Where it's like, there's a difference between a study showing that something results in a worse outcome Mm -hmm. versus no difference. Sure. And, okay, if we take 10 studies and half of them show no difference between let's say treatment A or B, in this case, lactate or no lactate, and the other half show a positive effect. Half of them show a positive effect. The other half show no harm. It's no worse. Sure. So with a small body of literature, generally speaking, I gravitate to that. Sure. Right? It's like, well, there's, and that's kind of how I see the the lactate story right now. Yeah. And if you want to zoom in just a little bit and we can come back out of the matrix. Um, one of the things that really, and, and Dan found this pathway that I, I didn't know existed before we did the review that was really interesting that I think as of today seems to explain this, at least if there is a, a lactate mediated anabolic signaling process, this one right as of now seems to make the most sense to me. So we, we produce lactate as a consequence of the glycolytic pathway. Mm-hmm. Think back to one of our previous topics on with high volume training, we see more glycolytic enzymes. Yes. Well, with more glycolytic enzymes, more breakdown of stored glycogen and glucose coming into the cell to get energy. We make more of those in response to training, but we also form more lactate. Sure. Yeah. If we're engaging that pathway, right? And so, okay, lactate seems to behave in, you know, the lactate shuttle. Yep. Right, cell to cell lactate shuttle. So lactate can be transported out and go to a adjacent fiber, and that fiber can take it up and actually use it for energy. It can yes. get the py- pyruvate and go through the citric acid cycle. Cool. Lactate also seems to bind to this receptor. It's a G protein coupled receptor, which is the most common receptor on our Super cells, right? There's all sorts of them. This one's called GPR81. And lactate seems to bind to it and instigate a signaling pathway that eventually seems to increase the activity of the mTOR complex. Yeah, um, pathway yeah. pathway or candidate pathway that's been demonstrated as, I just call it powerful evidence, but yeah. I would call it a real eye opener. Like, hmm. Right. Because people have been saying observationally for years that, you know, the burn makes a difference. Getting closer to failure. Right? higher density of training Mm -hmm. um, that maybe there's something there. And now that we're finding that when you present lactate to both animals and cell cultures, it causes a growth response. Right. And in addition, we have at least a little bit of evidence that there is a candidate pathway that links the presentation of lactate to the activation of the core muscle growth protein complex in humans and animals to me that doesn't quite say metabolites for sure grow muscle, but it shows me that if you're saying it's only tension and don't worry about the burn, you're probably not doing something you would be real confident putting money on. It's probably good to be like, I think metabolites might matter and we might find even more reasons why they matter later. Mm -hmm. Would you, would you think that's decent? Yeah. I kind of gets a causality, right? Like necessary, sufficient or contributory. Sure. And I I can see it being contributory. Contributory. Um, Sufficient is nonsense. There's no such thing as sufficient muscle growth until I have muscle tumors on my face. I'm not. (laughs) You've put in the work over the years and you've made good gains, but now you're ready to create your most impressive physique ever. 
and the RPI Pertrophy app is designed to make this possible. You can customize every single aspect of your training plan or let the app's AI take the lead. Whichever combination you use, your results will climb higher than ever. All you have to do is bring the effort. Click on the link in the description of this video to get started. Necessary is, I would say, a kind of a red herring because no one's ever claimed that necessary to get a burn. Everyone knows even sets of one repeated with enough frequency are going to cause robust hypertrophy. The tension hypothesis is not up for debate here. It's not metabolites versus tension, and it never was. But it's like, you know, if you can get some tension presented, you will with resistance training. But if you can do some higher up sets and push it close to failure, is there another mechanism called the metabolite mechanism that starts to contribute a little bit more to growth? Mm -hmm. Is that worth just knowing that it exists mm -hmm. offers you some options? So, for right. example, if you're like, man, like heavy fucking weights, the way to go because tension is all that matters, you're going to get some kind of injury and not be able to go heavy. And you're going to be like, well, fuck it. I'm just taking time off. But if you know the metabolite hypothesis is real and it actually works and then it's the metabolite model instead of hypothesis, then all of a sudden occlusion training, which sequesters metabolites, lets you produce a lot without a lot of force, becomes like a real tenable option. And we already know occlusion training works really well in the short term. But maybe if we can pin a mechanism to it, we can start to understand like, wow, the burn really does does matter. I'll put to you the way it matters to me most. I'll tell you this, man, and I'm a fucking huge science nerd, and so are you. This is what we do. If I feel the fucking gnarly burn on something like squats or uh, leg presses, hack squats, some shit you just don't want to do anymore, but I know there is convincing mechanistic linking of the thing that burns you, various byproducts, including lactate, and it's uh, sort of acidic counterpart. Hydrogen ions, et cetera. Say, yeah. If there is convincing data that the stuff you're making that makes your muscles burn also grows you, it changes the psychology of those last few reps. Mm -hmm. Because now pain means growth, and now I want more. Instead of being like, oh, I've already beat my reps from last week, better turn it in. <laughs> I kind of get, you know, real lizard eyed and go, oh mm -hmm. boy. And that's fun. It is. Kind of. It is. Well, so. If there, you knew for a fact that the burn had nothing to do with growth, I don't yeah, know. Fair. I'll just do another set of high tension right. after this. Who cares? Mm -hmm. But if you know that the burn causes growth, man, it kind of, it's a thing. It's like, if you know that the work you're doing is every hour you stay longer at work, you're getting paid overtime. Mm -hmm. It changes the dynamic of your mm -hmm. coworkers. Like, Hey man, you want to pack it in? You're like, I'm going to stay two more hours, bro. Like you're a security guard or something. Mm -hmm. They paying you real good for those two hours. If you were just getting paid the same, or if you were working for free at that point, like, yeah, I'm getting the fuck out of here. Let's go get a couple drinks. It changes the game. If there's the upside and the knowledge mm -hmm. of the mechanism, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Yeah, man. No, I mean, that's like inspired a lot of my research mm -hmm. is just like, I want to understand this to help apply it yes. and help others apply it. So yes. they don't waste their time. Yes. Right? So imagine training a client. If, let's say in a few years, let's pretend magically that we've confirmed pretty much like, yeah, okay. Lactate and a bunch of other ions absolutely contribute to muscle growth. Imagine how that changes the dynamics of the personal training sphere when you know Betty's doing split squats. She's like, I can't do it anymore. Like, Betty, the pain you feel is literally the ions that make you grow. More reps, Betty. <laughs> it's probably not nice to yell at women named Betty. I don't know. She might like it. I don't know. Here I, I don't thought. know. Is this a theoretical character, Betty, that is training? You know, she's, she's there for herself, it. right? Yeah. She's got to test it out. Maybe, uh, it would be motivating and she would do some more reps and then keep coming back and, and get bigger and stronger. And she racks the weight. She's like, don't ever mention science to me again. You're like, Oh Jesus, Betty. <laughs> Sorry. Yes. But time will tell. Time will tell. Yeah, we, uh, but we need to do research on that in humans. Yes. Good longitudinal, well controlled yes. research. Yes. We don't have an, I don't yes. want to overstate the, the literature on yes. this, you know, in, in humans, but it's promising, promising. I would Very say promising, promising, Very promising. Yeah.